Welcome. In this video, I'm going to do a solo playthrough of Alter Quest. So I've already done a setup and basics of how to play. And in that process, I've gone through a lot of the decks. So I'll be reshuffling some of these. I'm thinking this will be enough of the board due to my space constraints on this table. I'm doing the recommended beginner using the frocks, the belch lord, and the search. So for our threat deck, hailing from the Swamp Isle of Grest, the various Frox clans have a long history of infighting. These frog-like creatures are bred into violence and seek only to wreck and ruin. Threat tokens in this will represent the poisonous sludge-like substance that frogs use to subdue their foes. Each time a character suffers damage from a threat card's inflict test, that character gains a threat token. Each time a character with threat tokens would heal damage, they instead discard one threat token for each damage that would be healed. And we'll give this a another shuffle. Then we have Bulks the Belch Lord. The wetlands that poison the southern borders of Eretica are home to the most unsavory tribes of frocks. While most of these tribes are constant nuisances to local civilized folks, the bloated warlord leads the worst of the worst. His sheer size garners respect and fear among the frocks, and his greed is exactly what the common frocks seek in leadership. However, his reputation has grown mostly due to his unnatural ability to control the worst of his bodily fluids. Any living being near Boggs will feel his repulsive presence like a plague. So during the activate for him, each hero must either discard a focus or discard a supply. And if we have water in our ruin area, each hero must either discard a supply or suffer a damage. So we give this a final shuffle. And for our quest, since their appearance, the altars have attracted more than just power-hungry schemers and vile monsters. Legendary artifacts that have remained hidden from the world for centuries are also drawn toward the magic that emanates from the altars. It is a common belief that all relics and enchanted weapons were originally empowered by the hidden altars. You cannot leave these items to be found by evil forces. So for setup when building the feature deck, we'll shuffle together the altar found card and two other cards. Place them on the bottom of the feature deck. We'll remove each clue card from the quest deck, shuffle them together to create a clue deck, then set that neck near the quest, and then shuffle the quest deck and flip this card. So we'll go over each of that. So if there's one per player quest tokens on this card, and each hero is on the stairs tile, the heroes have found the artifact and will win the game. And any time a hero may discard any number of clue cards they control, the activate ability is each hero who controls a clue card must either discard a focus for each clue card they control or we're going to have to do a resist test. So we're going to take three damage and we can roll dice to reduce that damage. If there's one per player quest tokens on this card, the each hero must draw a threat card. And for our Quaking Altar, Activate, each hero may discard an armor token to change an altar die to a result of their choice. Each hero in the altar's room may gain one armor token. And if we have this in our rune stack, each figure gains an armor token. Then we have our lurker stack. Our feature card, so somewhere in these bottom three is going to be the actual altar. So we're going to have to go through at least six, maybe eight to find it. Then we have our search cards. These are our clue cards. Try to sit them away from the quest cards since the backs are the same as the actual quests. And for our character, we're going with Marine Duval. She's got a defensive one, 14 health, and a range of four for her ability. Exhausting that runes, exhaust this card, spending that rune token, choose an enemy within range, move that enemy up to three spaces towards you. And we also have our six stats, letting us know how many dice we get to roll for each of those tests. And she probably is not the best one for this one, but it's the one I picked, so we'll see if that's gonna cost us. She'll only be rolling one die for that test. 
She starts with a spiked shield. Range one as an action, discard an armor token to deal two damage to an enemy within range. And if we've got that symbol on the rune pool, exhaust to gain an armor token. And her blade, range one as an action, we can attack. Exhaust fire, deal one damage to an enemy within range. And we will start with four cards. So, and we do have an option of mulligan. We've got using shadows. Getting to armor. Probably not something I'm going to use right off the bat. Got an attack action. Exploiter surroundings. Let's see. Search, and each character in your room gains an armor token. I think we'll mulligan those two. So you got some battle lust and sworn to protect, and these will get shuffled back in. So then we just need to roll for our rune pull. So in the core game, we got these. The upgrade added colors, which I'm assuming will show up better on camera. So this will be our starting runes. And we're ready to get going. For a hero turn, we can perform up to three different actions. Move, resolve an action on a card, interact with a card, play a card or an action card from her hand, draw a card, rest by discarding a supply and healing two damage, or channel to gain a focus and change one die to the result of her choice. Three things we can do is play feet cards from her hand or exhaust abilities. So our first action is going to be to move one space. We're going to open this door. We still have two spaces to move, but we will reveal the room first. Starting with finding a feature card. So we're starting with an alchemy desk. And we'll put that in play in the feature space since it takes up two, it takes up the two white spaces there. See, as an activate ability, hero adjacent to this feature may heal a damage. We can interact to do a search for each supply gain during this test. Choose a character in this room to heal a damage. It's probably something we would want later in the game. That's what we got. Then we'll draw a search card. Prepared defenders. Even before pushing the door open, you hear sounds of preparation and battle shouts. Rattle weapons or armor soon follow. Advantage is lost, however, there's nothing to do but continue on. The search is far from over. When revealed, attach this card to the room's feature card. Each enemy drawn when revealing this room gains two armor tokens. It's an activate ability. Hero adjacent to this may draw a card from the clue deck. Then if we actually control a clue card, discard this. And now we draw a threat card. And that is only if we got a enemy. This is just a trap, so no armor tokens. I guess we got lucky with that. Ranger one is going to take four tasks on it to get rid of it. If we trigger it, it's going to attempt to inflict, and as an activate, each character in this room gains a threat token and must resist three. And this is red. So we find the red trap and we place it closest to our hero adjacent to the feature. So we've revealed the room. We still have two movement left. So one, two. It's got a range of one, so it's going to trigger. So we're going to roll to inflict, starting with four damage. We do get to roll three dice for that ability. Got a success and two focus, so that did not go well. So we've got three damage coming through with inflict. It's going to go through our armor, so that's going to block one. Two more coming through. If we had any armor tokens, it would reduce there. But we don't, so we'll take two damage. Then we will collect two focus tokens. In our second action, we are going to interact since we're within one of it, doing a task ability. 
We want to get four progress tokens on this. Our task is going to give us two dice. And we've got two critical successes, so we get to roll two more dice. So we've got four successes and two focus. So we succeed, and whenever we overcome a trap or defeat a minion or a monster, we get a supply token. We also get two more focus. We can have a max of five of those. So we'll move that from the board. And our third action is going to be to move. So one, two, staying adjacent to the feature. End of return, we'll get to draw a card. Finding some battle lost. So then we'll flip this over, going through a threat, villain, and quest turn for the threat. In any order the players choose, each hero resolves the activate text on each card in their threat area from left to right. We don't have any because we defeated the threat. So then the villain turn, resolve the activate text on each card in the villain play area from left to right. Then draw and resolve one villain card. If the villain has been defeated, each hero must draw a threat card instead. So each hero must either discard a focus or discard a supply. We'll get rid of a focus. Then since we have some water in here, discard a supply or suffer a damage. Get rid of the supply, re-roll that die. Probably should have done a, an exhaust ability earlier. Found some fire. Draw a card. Tongue from the dark is an event. Tier must resist four. Each tier that suffers damage this way must either exhaust one equipment card they control or discard a supply. Oh, and I forgot. When we took damage here, we would have gotten a threat token. Nothing good will come from that. Put that down with our damage. So we're resisting. Thermite gets us two dice. Two successes. Armor doesn't do anything, so we're taking two more damage. I don't think we're going to live very long. Then we must exhaust an equipment or discard a supply. So we'll exhaust. So we're going to the quest. Activating everything from left to right. We don't have any clue cards, so we can skip past that. Tier may discard an armor token. We don't have any. We've got that symbol, so each figure gains an armor token. Armor token and reroll that die. Getting the same thing back. Then a hero adjacent to this feature may heal a damage. We will. Then the attach card. Now may draw a card from the clue deck. Then if we control a clue card, discard this. So our clue we find is ripped fabric. When revealed, a hero may take control of this card, and we will. Which means this card gets discarded. While adjacent to the altar, you may discard this card along with a matching copy of Ripped Fabric to place one quest token on the quest rules card. So it looks like we need to go searching for another one of these in order to get to our win condition. We'll set that down here. And that concludes the quest turn. So we flip over and three more turns coming to us. So I would like to do some more healing. But the odds of us getting a supply from that, since we only roll one die with that, is slim. But hey, we're going to risk it. First action. We're going to interact. Rolling one die. Oh, we got a crit. Getting another success. We can discard that to draw a search card. Potion of Agility, it's a consumable. We can use it before rolling dice for an agility test. We gain plus two dice for that test. 
Then for each extra, we get a supply and we heal one. Then for our second action, we're gonna spin the supply to heal two. Actually, no, the first time we would've went to heal, we would've just healed this off. I'll get everything together here in a bit. Like I said, this is my first time playing this game, so it might be a little rough, but the rules seem fairly simple, but not to say the game is gonna be easy. So I could use my third and final action to move and explore, but I feel like that's a bad idea. So I think I'm just gonna draw a card. Finding some battle lust. So we've done our three actions, ending our turn. We draw another card. Go to our threats, we don't have any. Villain activates. Discard a focus or supply, get rid of focus. We don't have any water to activate, so we're done there. Drawing a villain card, concealing flatulence. Each minion gains two armor tokens. Each hero with no minion in their threat area must draw one lurker card. Not what I wanted to see. So this guy is gonna come out. Defense of one, health of five, range of six, and movement of four. And the shadow space in this room is right there. So back to our turn. He is one, two, three spaces away from us. So first thing, beginning of our turn, we ready our cards. We're gonna exhaust this one to choose an enemy within range of four to have them move three spaces towards us. And we're gonna go back one step here. Whenever we complete and interact search with one of these, we put a token on it, so that's gonna increase it's difficulty for the next one. So back to us exhausting. One, two, three. Reroll that rune. And that was an exhaust, not an action. So first action is to attack. Two dice. Two successes. We'll spend a focus to get three successes. One gets taken up by the defense. We'll use the exhaust ability, spending the fire, deal a damage to an enemy. Roll that. So our second action, even though this is exhausted, we can still do the actions on it. All right, success and a crit. So one soaked up by the defense, two breaks through. Gain a supply token. And we're stuck in the same boat. So knowing what can happen, we might as well charge in. So we'll go there. Third action is movement. Door's gonna open. We reveal to find a weapon rack. Way over here. Here adjacent to that, may deal a damage to an enemy in this room. And it's got an interact. And since I'm not planning on going backwards in this, I'm just gonna cover those up due to lack of space. Get a quest card for that. Swirling Mist. When revealed, attach this card to this room's feature card, then roll all dice in the altar pool. The hero adjacent to this feature may draw a card from the clue deck. So we're looking for more clues still. Then we get a threat. Yeah, some more muck stakes. And that shows up right there. We still have two movement left. Might as well move next to it, which will trigger it, inflicting four. 
three successes with a crit. Oh, we made it. So we do not get damaged. Nice. In the directions, draw a card. Using shadows. Our threat. Each character in this room gains a threat token. And must resist three. That is our better stat at least. So we got two crit successes. So four successes and we get a focus. Then the villain, we'll get rid of a discard a focus, no water. Draw this card, Acid Reflux. Not good. See the here with the fewest cards in their threat area. We have to resist four using our agility, which is two dice. Two successes. So we're going to end up taking two damage. On to our quests. We now have a clue. We can discard a focus or resist. Well, we'll get rid of the focus. Then each hero may discard an armor. I'm fine with not doing that. Each figure gains an armor. That's because of this symbol. And then we have to be adjacent for those to activate, so we're done there. So back to our turn. Let's see if we can take care of this trap. Ready our cards. We got two agility. I'm gonna go ahead and use our potion to get an extra two dice. So since that's a use, that goes away. So we've got three successes and a focus and a crit success. So we've more than passed, but we will get two focus tokens out of that. Taking care of that card. Gain a supply. That was action one. Next, we're gonna move here. Third action, heal two. One gets rid of the threat. Then there. End her turn, draw on a card. Biting. So that was a quick turn. We're done with threats. The villain. Discard a focus, and we don't have water. And that guy comes out when we go to draw a card. We don't have any, so I feel like we're going to be fighting that guy here soon. But first, a noxious presence. Each hero must resist three. It's worth their best stat. Each hero that suffers damage from this must either discard a supply or suffer a damage. Success, crit success, and a focus. All right, so we've got our three and a focus. Search, we've got one card. Get rid of one focus. For here, we may discard an armor token to change an altar die to what we want it to be. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll make this fire. Don't have that symbol. On to the next. Hero adjacent to this feature may deal one damage to an enemy in this room. There aren't any. We can draw a clue card. Got a half scroll to go with our ripped fabric. So we can take control of it, we will, which discards the mist. And same thing there next to the altar and discard a, another one of these. We'll put a token 
on the quest rules card. And back to our turn. First action, we're gonna heal. Second action, movement, one, two, got one more movement left. Reveal in the room, move these cards over here. We found a bookshelf along the wall right there. Activate here adjacent to this feature may draw a card. Interacting helps us draw more cards also. Quest card. We're in a darkened room. When revealed, attach this to the feature card. Then each hero must either discard a focus or draw a lurker card. Well, fortunately we have a focus. And we'll activate that by being adjacent to it. Then our threat. And a Muckslinger. Defense one, five health, range of five, and a movement of five. And he comes in right there. So we've got one more movement. Oops, knock down the door. So our final action. We've got some battle lust going on. You may move up to three spaces, then attack one. So one, two, three. Our range is one. Got two dice for this one. Success, crit, into another crit, awesome. So we've got a total of one, two, three, four hits. Defensive one, so three makes it through. We get two focus tokens. Unfortunately, we don't have that symbol or else we could deal a damage to an enemy within range. We do have fire, so we can exhaust that, deal a damage. Oh, now we get that symbol. Well, what we can do is exhaust to gain an armor token. Finding some more fire. And that's going to end it, drawing a card into a war cry. And now we've got a threat. So this little guy, he wants to move as far away from us as he can. One, two, three, four, five. And he's going to shoot at us to inflict four using our agility, which is two dice. Success and a crit. So we block three from that, and then with inflict, it does go through our armor, so we'll take no damage. Then we go to the villain. Either need to discard a focus or supply. We'll lose a focus. No water. Get a card. The infamous croak of bulks. Tier must activate the enemy in their threat area that is farthest from them. Each hero unable. All right, so he's going to shoot at us again. So inflicting. Got two and a focus. So we make that three. And our defense will take the last one. Actually, no, we'll keep the focus. So we've got two coming through. One hits there and one hits this one. Then we go here and can discard the focus. But we've got two items. Never mind, that doesn't help us either. 
So we've got a resist three with our weakest stat. All right, we'll use that there. We block two damage and take one. May discard armor to change a die to something else. We're not going to. And we're not adjacent to the bookshelf. So back to our turn. Ready our cards. Take a move action. One, two, three. Exhaust our blade to deal a damage. Which gets us a supply. So that was one action. Second action, move again. One, two, three. And last action, we'll go ahead and interact. So we're searching with our weak trait. All right, maybe that's not the best idea. So we're gonna gain a focus and change, we're channeling, gain a focus, change an alter die to the result of your choice. So you get a focus. We'll change this to that symbol, then use it to gain an armor token. Getting some fire. End your turn by drawing a card. Explode our surroundings. And I think we're gonna have options when the big guy comes out. All right, no threats. Off to the villain. Discarding a focus. No water. Toxic tactics. Each hero must either discard a supply or resist five. Well, we've got a supply. Then unfortunately, we don't have enough focus for that, so we're resisting. Got a crit, two more of those. All right, taking one damage. The altar's not gonna do anything. We are next to the bookshelf. Here adjacent to this feature may draw a card. Furious Arc. And looking for a clue. Falling debris. You may resist four to discard this card. Uh, look at the bottom two cards of the clue deck, choose one to resolve and shuffle the other back into the clue deck. Otherwise, discard this card and gain one focus. Well, I don't want to resist because that's where we take damage. So we'll choose the otherwise, discard this card and gain a focus. Actually, no, that's gonna help us. We'll resist four. So rolling two. So we're gonna take two damage. Look at the bottom two cards of the clue deck, choose one to resolve. And we want a half scroll or ripped fabric, and we got a half scroll, so we'll take that one. And that gets shuffled in. So we've got what we need. We just need to find the altar now. And at any time, here may dis... Well, I'm half afraid. I don't know. Something makes me discard him anyway. So I'll keep that one. All right, back to our turn. Now I think we just start running. So movement of one, open a door. Our feature is some fungus, a fungal patch. Here adjacent to this feature may deal one damage to an enemy in this room. Our search card, a potential ambush. Attach this card to the room's feature card. After drawing threat cards, each hero must test three. Tier who fails must activate the drawn threat. So that's not good at all. Because now we get a threat. So you got a Frox Bogmancer. And he shows up there. 
And we have to do an agility test. We got two successes and a focus. We failed, so he activates. He's got a range of six. And line of sight, I just need a point on his square to a point on mine, so he's got line of sight. He's going to inflict five on our worst trait. So one die, we got a success. Inflict goes through here, so we've got one, two, three, four. We still end up taking the damage. And since we took damage from a threat card's inflict, we get a threat token. This and our fungus is around the corner. So we still have three movement. And we can't go diagonally through the door. So one, two, three, can't quite get to him. We don't have the right room down here. So our second action is gonna be battle lust. Move up to three spaces, then attack. Just need to move one, rolling two dice. Got a crit in there. So three damage. Now these cards would have readied at the beginning of our turn. Our final action, we'll use our blade Gonna move this out of the way so I got some better room to roll dice. So we got a crit in there. So three damage coming in, takes care of him. Get to say supply token. I'll swap those out for this bigger one. End our turn drawing a card. Furious arc. No threat, so off to the villain. Lose a focus. No water, get a card. So I got a resist three coming up. We've got it, we also have a crit in there. See if we can get some more focus. Nope, just the one. So no more damage, good with that one. We do need to resist three. So we'll take two damage. Seven out of 14. Got our altar. Um, not gonna do anything there. And we're too far away there. So back to our turn. So one, two, three, first action. Second action, just two. Let's see what doors I wanna explore next. Our third and final action, we're gonna heal. Spinning that, remove a threat token, then a damage. Then draw a card, get her war cry. No threats, the villain. We lose a focus, no water, so straight to this card. Oops, not many more of those left. Acid reflux. So I got a resist four. Got two dice. One success, so we're taking three damage. So nine out of 14, not looking good. Then we got to resist again. Getting a focus. Taking three damage. 12 out of 14. Yep, don't think I'm making it out of this one alive. So we can change a die if we had an armor to discard. Then over here, we may deal a damage to an enemy 
or go looking for a clue card. Got a torn map. So it's back to our turn. I think I might have forgot to get a focus there earlier, but I don't think it matters after we have this much damage. So we are going to evaluate our life decisions. Move two, take a peek. Revealing a mirror. If we're adjacent to that, we gain an armor token. Our quest card attaching to that. Strange fatigue. See, when revealed, attach this card to the feature card. Any tier must either discard a supply or resist four. And that's probably going to kill us. So we've got two dice. Oops. And I don't remember what that was. So we are going with a success and a crit. Resisting four. We have two successes. Get to use a focus, so we've got three successes. We take one damage, so we live just a little bit longer. But we get a threat card. With the Bog Nancer coming in. So this was our first action, I believe. So he's coming in, and he is on the opposite end of the board. We still have three movements, so one, two, three. He's within four. Four of us. So our second action, Battle Lust. We're more of a will to live one more round, move up to three spaces, then attack. We get two dice. Let me move this over, looks like a glare. Two successes, two focus. All right, we're gonna let out a battle cry. Testing our charisma, which is two. So we got a crit, a success, and a focus. Crit brings us into another crit. To another focus. So we've got three successes. For each success, either gain one armor token or discard an armor token from an enemy within range. So we end up getting three armor tokens and two focus. And that is a feat, not an action. Then as our third action, discard an armor token to deal two damage to an enemy within range. Then Exhaust the Blade, Spending Fire to deal a damage to an enemy within range. So we get a supply, we just don't have any actions to use it to save our life. So we're going to let out another war cry, just in case extra armor will help us. One success. So we'll spend a focus to get two more armor tokens. I think that's all we got, so we'll draw a card. So, okay. Threats, we don't have any other than we're at 13 out of 14 health. Villain, lose a focus. See how bad this is gonna be. Concealing flatulence. Each hero with no minion in their threat area must draw a Lurker card. So we find a Ragok Cannibal. Comes out right in front of us. Quest, resist three. Here comes her death. So we need to resist all three or it's over. 
And we can only resist two. So we take 14 health. We came in front of this guy and I think we're about ready to be eaten. So I feel like I played correctly, or by the rules anyway. Must have been able to make some better choices. Let me know in the comments below if you think it's because I picked the wrong character. Maybe I should have picked someone that had more intellect. Or some of my strategy should have been different. Anyway, I hope you like this quick playthrough of Alter Quest. So please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.